Hey guys, my name is Rafa. Welcome to episode one of the Honey Bee Chronicles podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Honey Bee Chronicles. You can find me on Ravel Me, Ravelry at Rafa Peterson. So welcome to episode one. So it's kind of a funny story. I have been thinking about making videos about knitting, not tutorials or anything, but just talking about what I've been doing, et cetera, et cetera, having no idea that the podcast community existed. And then one day I stumbled upon a video from, I believe it was the Dyer's Notebook, I want to say. Um, and I was like, oh, she's talking about yarn. What? And it wasn't a tutorial. What? Like, really? So I went down the rabbit hole and I am obsessed with podcasts. I think that they are the best way to spend time knitting. I think that they are perfect for when I'm working and I want to listen to something that I don't really need to be watching. Super relaxing and me obsessed. So I decided I would come on too. So I'm just going to jump in to a couple of finished objects. Then we'll go into some works in progress, talk about some things I've acquired recently, etc. Um, I will say that my works in progress are in project bags that I've acquired recently, so I'll try to show them and explain where I got them and stuff. But I'll start with a pair of socks. So I should probably say this, actually. So I live in Arizona. It's like 109 degrees out right now. It's awful. I hate the heat. I'm born and raised in Arizona, so that's why I'm here. I feel weird leaving because my whole family's here and stuff. So yeah, I'm still here. Um, that does not stop me from knitting what I want in it. I've been to a lot of yarn stores in Arizona and for the most part everything is cotton. It is all for warmer weather, understandably so. All the colors named after desert things, understandably so. Not a fan. I like hedgehog fibers. I like Madeline Tosh. I like bright colors. I love wool. I don't knit with cotton if I can help it. I use it for tubular cast-ons. Other than that, not down. So what you'll see is very not Arizona, but I don't care because I'm going to knit what I want to knit, how I want to knit it, etc. So let me start with a pair of socks. So these are, and I don't have sock blockers with me. They're in the other room. I should have grabbed them, but oh well. These are the Engelbrock socks, I believe, and I'll put the link down below. Um, they are from Brooklyn Tweed. They are very, very comfortable. They're worsted weight. And I believe this was some cheap yarn. I want to say this was like the Fisherman's Wool yarn you can buy at Walmart. At Walmart. Michael's. Um, I made them specifically because I have two long plane rides coming up in the next couple of months. So I wanted something to keep my feet warm. I did a couple of modifications. The big one being that I made the leg a lot shorter. I don't like things that high up on my leg. I just don't find them comfortable. So I didn't. So, yeah, I love these. This was my first sock construction at all. There's a little hole here. Oh, well. Um, it took me forever to understand how to do the heel. Finally did. Been looking at the wrong place the whole time. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to go back, though. Um, so, yeah. So, I really like these. It's funny because when I was knitting it, the wool was super scratchy, like annoyingly scratchy. But I had this in my stash for years. You can see the cabling pattern a little bit better there. Um, I've had this in my stash for years and just hadn't done anything with it. So I decided, what the heck, why not jump into it? So I did. I don't even think. It's awful because I don't even think about all the good yarn that I have. I just see what I have in front of me. I'm like, oh, I might as well just make that. Not even thinking about how many hours are going to go into it and if it sucks. If the, not the pattern sucks, but if the yarn sucks, then I wasted time. But oh well, whatever. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, so... I made these and I was kind of worried that I wasn't going to like them, but what I, once I actually blocked them, let them rest, and put them on, I'm a fan. They're really comfortable, so I do recommend the pattern. It was easy. The cabling, I don't find hard. Um, I like cables. I should say I love cables. Um, I like doing this. It's fun. For me, cables are like magical. I know it might sound stupid, but since I started knitting, and even before when I started learning about knitting... Um, which if you guys want to know about my journey in knitting, let me know and I'll film a video on that or I'll include it in my next podcast. I find 
cables to be like magical because they change the fabric so much that I'm just, I can't, I'm obsessed with them. So that's my first finished object. The other one I technically am not supposed to show because it's a test knit for my absolute favorite knitwear designer, Andrea Maori. But I guess I'll show like a little bit because I'm just obsessed with it. Hold on a second. Okay. So this is the cardigan. I haven't put buttons on it, but I don't care. I love the stitch pattern. I think it's beautiful. I did a contrasting pocket liner. I should probably say the colors. Maybe it'll show up. Maybe not so much. Maybe you don't want to show up. No? Okay. There. There we go. You can see the color a little bit better. So this is Cascade uh, 220 Superwash. Hate it. We'll never knit with it again. Thank you, local yarn store, for telling me about it. Whatever. Um, and this is Hedgehog Fibers in Monarch. I love this color. So no shade at my local yarn store or anything. I love supporting... Small business owners, I love supporting yarn stores in general, but the yarn store that's closest to me and that's closest to my work and the one that I tend to go to if I'm going to go to a store locally, I'm just not a big fan of their selection. It's a very one-minded view of yarn and knitting and who knitting should be for. I, obviously, I'm in the minority of knitting. I'm a guy I'm younger whatever not young but I'm younger um but that being said if the most universal yarn you're going to show me is something that's very uncomfortable and I came in to talk and this was oh, about a year ago actually that I purchased the yarn for that um I was going to knit another sweater which I'm knitting but in different fabric we'll talk about it we'll get there soon um but I wanted something that would be very comfortable, something soft, something squishy, something pretty, something that I would like the yarn in. It was recommended to me. I, it, I felt it. I didn't really know any better, so I went with it. Again, the one thing that I'm going to say about me and this channel and this podcast and everything is I'm not going to lie, and I'm going to try to be as honest as I can. Some things I say, not everyone's going to like. Can't do anything about it. Um, some things may come off as shady or as you know, very opinionated. It's me. I'm sorry. And I've been back to that store a couple of other times. I have taken classes there and I, I love the people. They're cool, and, you know, whatever. But in terms of like demographic, not so much me, but whatever. So that's Cascade 220. I went on around there. Um, it's not bad yarn. It splits a little bit easily. The color, I think, is beautiful. Um, it's this very jewel-toned blue peacocky color. There's a little, um, there's a little ball right there, you know that. Um, there's a little green fleck to it that I like. Um, after blocking, it's a little bit softer. I mean, I wore it for the first time for a couple minutes while I was setting everything up just because I felt like it. And it was scratchy. It was scratchy. I'll still wear it. I love the length. It goes down past my butt, so that's fun. Um, yeah, I love the pattern, though. And when it comes out, I'll definitely name it, show the show the sweater more. I'll probably make another one because it was a really quick knit. I did it in just over two weeks, I want to say. So it was really, really quick, and it was definitely... It was fun. So those are my two most recent finished objects. I did... What else did I do? I have a half object, which I'll show, and that's part of my works in progress because I started the second, it's a sock. Um, I started the second one recently, but I'm trying to think. I had done a hat and it was beautiful. It was also by Andrea Mowry. I accidentally got washed and unraveled, so <laughs> I rewound it. I'll make something else out of it in the near future and hopefully show you guys that. Um, those are my two most recent finished objects. So yeah, let's move on to works in project. Okay. Blah. Let's move on to works in progress. By the way, I doubt this will be edited very much. I used to have a YouTube channel that was all about makeup back in the day. Still have it, but I don't upload on it anymore. And that channel, the more I had to edit a video, the less likely I was to put it up. So I'm going to go in with the good foot forward and try to, you know, be like, yeah, I'm going to do it, whatever. But being realistic for myself, the less additional work I have to do, the better. So 
especially the first couple, this will probably be a little bit bleh, bleh, but oh, well, if you watch it, I hope you like it. <laughs> By the way, completely forgot to say thank you for tuning into this. Um, I don't know if anyone other than my best friends and my mom will watch this, to be honest, but if you do, hi, say hi to me. I'm thinking about starting a Ravelry group. Let me know if you guys are interested in that or whatever. And yeah, so works in progress. Let's get back to it. Also, like I said, um, the bags are all recent acquisitions, so I'll go over them. Um, actually, I'm going to hide the bag below, which is off a little bit of it, whatever. Um, and then I'll show them at the end because I really want to like talk about the bags because they're worth it. So the last couple of days, so, okay, so I'm doing another test knit for the same designer and there was an issue with the sizing and with the counts. This issue lasted for over like five, six days, I want to say. So I didn't touch the pattern because why am I going to keep knitting when I'm at the spot where there's a mess or where there's not a mess, where it's messed up. I don't want to like have to frog a bunch because then I'll probably never finish it and it's test knit, so I kind of need to finish it. Um, so I decided to move on, work on something else in the meantime. So I decided to work on a hat or two. <laughs> so... The first one was going to be, it's actually another Andrea Maori pattern. I believe it's called Chevy. Um, it's a really pretty worsted weight hat with a chevron design on the sides with yarn overs and uh, twisted stitches. Started it, liked it, because I've done another pattern that had a similar lace element to it that I thought was pretty. I did a sweater or a cowl for my mom. Well, I started it and I was like, Ugh. It's not what I want for this yarn. So I decided to design my own hat. And right now I've just done the ribbing and like a couple of rows of the cabling. Um, again, love cables, so it's gonna be cables. Um, but I'll show you what I have so far. I'm like nowhere near it. I have my like actual cable pattern written out, so I'm working on it. But oh, you guys, this yarn, this freaking yarn. So this is Hedgehog Fibers in the Merino um, Aaron, I think. Maybe Iran, let me know. This, where am I? Oh, it's like backwards. Hopefully it's not backwards once it comes up. Um, so it's Hedgehog Fibers, like I said. It's 100% Superwash Merino. But the color. Oh, it's literally egg yolk color. I keep looking at my other side. I'm sorry. I keep looking at myself. So I'm not just cystic, but I don't mean to be. Um... But this color is just everything. It screams to me. I purchased it probably like a month ago from Hedgehog Fibers directly online. Oh, I bought this one and I bought a couple other ones. I'm not showing because they're not new stash enhancements. Um, yeah, so whatever. Um, but oh, I wish you could see it. It's not as bright as it is in the camera right there. I'm like trying to see if there's a way to get it so you can see it. It's yolk. Think of an egg yolk and that's literally the color. So the hat is literally, like I said, it's just the ribbing right now. And like, I think I've done like three rows after that. So you can kind of see a little bit of cabling starting. Um, yeah, did not get very far in it. This is like a day worth of progress. And by a day, I mean like two, three hours worth of progress. So not very far in it, but whatever. It's still fun. I will still finish it. Just not yet, because she did release the updates to the pattern. So that. And then, I'm going to put this back over here so I can still show the bag. Let me see. Oh, pardon my reach. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. You stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Okay, good. Okay. Then I started another yellow hat, because of course I did. And this pattern is by Born and Raised, Australia, who's now in the U.S., if I understand correctly. I followed them on Instagram for a long time. And I've always thought her hats were so cute. They're usually for kids, like babies, and I'm not down for that. Um, I'm sure I could adapt the patterns for myself, but it's a lot of work when I can just find a pattern that's already made for me. So she came out with one for adults, and it has this, like, honeycomb pattern, I want to say. Um, and she showed it on a speckled yarn, and I own a lot of speckled yarns from Hedgehog Fibers and um, Metal and Tosh, mostly Hedgehog Fibers, though. Um, and so I saw this one, and I was like, oh. 
and I've been wanting to find a hat pattern for this yarn because again I don't know why I've just been obsessed with the idea of having like a couple of really really bright yellow hats so this is hedgehog fibers fool's gold you can see all the speckling I have the yarn here and it's in the merino DK base I love this yarn I don't know what it is about it it just speaks to me. I bought it the same time I bought the other um, yarn. Because I, I, when I buy, I go ham and it's awful and I wish I didn't, but I do and I can't help it. Um, for the most part. Lately, I've been like, okay, calm down, Rafa. You don't need to shop as much, but whatever. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's a process. I'm trying. So, anyway, so this is Fool's Gold. Like I said, I love this. And this pattern, because it's not really like intricate cables as opposed to texture. In my opinion, I'm just making sure you can see it. There we go. Um, it lends super well to the texture of the speckles. So yeah, I'm just, this is again like two, three hours worth of work. I have ADD. I literally have ADD. And in knitting, it's obviously no better because very few people other than my partner can work on one project at a time like to completion and not want to do anything else I'm trying but you know it's hard but so anyway so yeah so this is that hat the texture on the back is kind of weird which I hadn't noticed until now but you can see like it like bumps up it's interesting but so yeah so this is my other work in progress again I need to work on it to be honest I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I have another um, skein of the same yarn, and I'm thinking of doing a second hat in it. Probably won't because that's a lot in the same. But there's a pattern by The Wool Co. I can't remember the name of it because I cannot pronounce it for the life of me. It starts with an F. Just came out. Um, one of the sisters from the Hey Sister podcast, which I'm obsessed with, Hey Girls. If you watch this, you probably won't, but I love you. Anyway. Um, you guys shop as much as I do, I feel, and you guys have as many works in progress as I do, so that's fun. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but she test knit it, and I was like, Ooh. it has really cool texture and like with twists and stuff, and I really want to start it. Um, I was telling no, and he's like, no, not now, no, you have two on the needles, and I'm like, oh, still longer, no. So I'm thinking about frogging this one eventually, because I probably won't work on it for a little while. Um, and doing that pattern, or I may do this, and I have another Hedgehog Fibers yarn that I would like to do that in. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know why I want so many hats. I don't wear them because I don't. Like, I work somewhere where I don't think it makes sense to wear a hat. I'm in Arizona, so it's freaking hot all the time, so it doesn't make sense to wear a hat. And, yeah, I'm like, what am I doing? But I want it, so I may do it. And that's why you buy yarn, right? To make what you want out of it. Lord knows. But... Yeah, so we'll see. I don't know. But the other yarn I have, I think, is called Sage, and it's by Hedgehog Fibers. Like I said, it isn't a recent purchase, but it's a gorgeous, like, turquoisey, sagey, green, blue color. Um, I may show it at a later point, but yeah. So for now, that those are the two hats I'm working on. And then I have a sock that I just cast on today, worked a couple of rounds and got annoyed with it. But I'll show it anyway. This isn't a recent purchase. Oh. Oops. Hold on. Dropping stuff. Okay, back. This isn't a recent purchase, so I'll show the bag. This is from The Little Skein. It's a nice bag. Do I think it's worth the price? No, not necessarily, because it was kind of expensive for what it is. Um, I mean, she's well known, so it's probably why it's a little bit more expensive. But, need I digress? So this is the first of the two socks. This one's real freaking big, but it fits me nice. Um, and I don't have that big of feet, but this is the Saturday matinee sock, which I'm obsessed with the pattern, and I loved. I like this is my sock block. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I love her patterns. I I really want to make the jelly roll socks, and I kind of started one, but I'm not showing it because it's literally just a little bit of a tube. But whatever. But I started the second one. Literally, this much in. Where am I? I was gonna film on a different camera, but it didn't want to work, so I was just like. Oh, just use my iPad because that's what the grocery girls do and the grocery girls are bae. They know everything, so I'm following their example. Hope you guys don't mind that. Um, so yeah, so I started it. I tried to start it on this 9-inch circular. This is by Tiago. Um, 
I should probably say the other two patterns that I showed, they are both on, um, or whips I should say, they're both on Addy Turbos because I love Addy Turbos and then my second favorite is Haya Haya, which I have something on, or maybe two of them, I don't know, whatever. Um, and then this is on a Chiabu that I just bought after I watched The Very Pink Knit because I love her and she recommended that for the nine inch circular. So I'm trying, it's a process to get used to. I'm like four rows in, nothing crazy, but yeah. I wanna finish the other sock because I finished one, so I need to do the second one. So yeah, and the bag's okay. It's cute, not bad. I like the little strap, that's nice too, whatever. Um, so I'll draw that over there. Okay, so two more works in progress. One is a test knit, I'll show you-ish, but we'll do that one second because that's like my, my biggest work in progress. The other one is something that I really, really, really want to finish before I go to Tokyo. Um, and it is the Elusive, and I call it the Elusive because I've started it like five times in, in the other blue yarn. That's what I actually bought the yarn for originally. But it is the Timberline sweater, or cardigan by Jared Flood for Brooklyn Tweed. This is the first sleeve, so I'm not very far in at all. Um, I love it. My God, do I love it. I love cables, like I said. So this is like cabling times 50. A little part of me is concerned that this is gonna be um, too much cables, you know, in appearance-wise, but I love it, so who cares if it is, whatever. Um, and I'm doing this in Madeline Tosh, the Pure Merino, I wanna say it's called. Oh, my phone's ringing, ignore it, shh. Um, in the color Boxcar, oh, guys. Oh. You can't even imagine, oh my God, like, the, the softness of this. Let me just mute you. Shh, Victoria. Love you. Shh. Um, the softness of this is just everything. It has a really nice squish to it. It's funny because it says on the label, if you're doing a large project, alternate skeins every couple of rows, whatever. Um, I did at the beginning. And I, can't, I couldn't see any kind of difference. And it was a pain in the ass. But, ass, I don't care, whatever, I'm going to say ass. Um... But, so I just stopped, and so I'm hoping that when I switch to the other one, I'm not going to have regretted that decision. But, oh, I'm living for this. So, I am on the fifth repeat of 11 for the chart. And then you do, I believe that's when you do the, um, the sleeve cap, maybe? Or maybe you just keep increasing until you're done. Right now, as it sits, it's already, like, almost to my elbow, or almost covering my elbow. So I think after the next repeat, I should have my elbow covered. So I think that the 11 will be perfect. I noticed that for me, and I don't know why, um, because a lot of patterns I know will say like, repeat the increase, like repeats or whatever, 11 times and then continue in pattern until however many inches. It's rare that I have to continue after that. I don't know why, but whatever. That's how it was with the other sweater. But yeah, I'm obsessed with it. I can't wait to show you this bag because I think it's super cute. But it's a new bag too. And then, this is the test knit. We need to have a discussion on this test knit. So this is for my mom. Um, let me actually show the yarn. So this yarn, oh, I can't really show because it's in the wrong thing. But you can kind of see it. This is spin cycle yarn in the independence base. It's in um, like a chunky uh, worsted, heavy worsted. In the color grumpy words. I hope it's not backwards. I really hope it's not backwards, but I don't, I don't know, whatever. Um, so when I took a spinning class, we talked about that, and I'm sure they say this all the time. When you first start knit, or start spinning, you have very like uh, varying texture, like thickness, and that that's expensive yarn. That's what you're gonna want to buy, and you'll never be able, or it'll be really hard to recreate it. I would never want to buy this yarn. I bought it because it was the yarn that was recommended for the pattern. I got a coupon code for it, so I was down. I let my mom pick the color because this is for her. And it's it's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of the colors. It's very not me. Um, I love the pattern, like a lot, but I'm not the biggest fan of the, of the yarn. I think it's the control freak in me that the tension ends up looking like it's not even because of the thick and the thin. 
Um, but I'll just kind of show you. It's a, it's a kind of basic pullover. I'm not going to show you too much about it. It will be a paid for pattern, so I'm definitely not going to discuss the construction very much. But like, where is it? Like right here. I don't like that. It makes me sad. Like I just, it's just, and there's like these like almost lace weight thin pieces too, whatever. Um, but I'm at the point in the pattern where I'm basically just knitting in the round, just knit even. It's so boring. I don't do well with like this plain stockinette. I think I'm going to call this the battle of the stockinette because so you can see it like looks like a little sack right now um but it's an interesting construction it, it, that part was interesting that part was cool the increases to get to where i am was fun this part's just boring as hell um i have i'm at like six inches from where the arm pit is basically and i need to get to i think i need like a couple more inches and then i knit flat until the ribbing so I'm just, I'm like, I'm not super far away. And if I really try by next week's episode, I should be able to have it done, which I won't really show that much again, because the pattern's not coming out for a little while. But I'm just, I'm struggling so much with this. So any like words of encouragement are really, really welcome. I knit in the Portuguese style, which is um, with like a pin here or around your neck, but I always do it with the pin. Because I, I like it better and I'm a lot faster at it that way. I can't do continental to save my life. And I do a form of flicking when I throw. Which is funny that I can't do continental because I'm left-handed. So I figured that I would be able to. But no. Um, but so I'm, I don't have an issue with purling. And I don't have an issue with the knit stitch either at all. But there's just something about it that I just think is so boring. But... I just want to get it done so I can move on and be able to like dedicate a lot more time to my timberline and you know whatever so let me jump into the project bags and then we'll do a little bit of stash enhancements I guess and then I'll probably blabble a little bit because I like to talk I do anyway so the we'll start with the bag that has that um, sweater and I believe that's gonna be called the spin sweater I could be wrong and if I'm right, I may not have been supposed to tell you that, so I'm sorry if I did, whatever. But it lives in this bag, which I live for this bag. I will say, I think she is my absolute favorite bag maker thus far. Of who I have bags from at home that are in my possession, I think she's my favorite. Her aesthetic is very me, it's very fun, whimsical, whatever. So she is Molly Klein Design. I'll put a link to her Etsy. Ooh, ooh, can you see? Yeah, you can. Um, it has, so it has the sweater. I don't know if it'll fit once the sleeves are attached and going, but for now it fits perfectly in this. This could be a tiny bit bigger, to be honest, because I'd like to be able to put it on my arm the way like the fringe field bag works really well on the arm. Um, but it's fine. I still love this bag. So yeah, that's one of them. And that bag, I think I got in the mail like two, three weeks ago, I want to say. So, yeah, I love it. Okay, the next one is super fun. Um, and it is this one. I don't play Pokemon Go. I think it's dumb, but that's... I think it's dumb for me. Down for anyone who wants to play it. Live your life. Have fun. Noah plays it all the time. I have no problems with it. Um, it's just... Ugh. I can never catch them, and I get stressed out by it. Whatever. So... But I love Pokemon anyway, and I can't wait to play the, the actual, like, DS game that's coming out in November, I believe. Um, so yeah, so here's that bag. I love this. I love the size. It's a sock bag or medium bag. I can't remember which one. It's also by Molly Klein Design. I do believe. The inside is really cute. It has just like the polka dot. I love this bag. I just think it's so fun. And this one, the handle, I think, is the same. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess it's fine, but I can't really use it for, I guess, what the handle is technically for. This one is everything. You want to talk about a project bag that is everything. It's called the friggin' Majestic Unicorn. When I saw that, I could not pass it up. Like, no chance. So this is the Majestic Unicorn. Same size as the previous bag. Also by Molly Klein Design. I just realized that her Pokemon bag, she didn't include her tag on it. That's kind of sad, but whatever. Um, but yeah, so it's this. I love it. I think it's so cute. 
And in one of the bags, oh, it's actually in this bag. Hold, please. In the bag that I have the socks in, I bought a DPN holder in the same Pokemon material. Isn't that cute? I think it's fun. Anyway. So yeah, so those are all by Molly Klein Design. And then at the same, on the same day actually, I ordered on um, Etsy this bag, which is supposedly big enough to hold a large men's sweater. I disagree because I'm, I'm pretty large and in charge and it didn't fit. Um, but this is by A Simpler Home. I don't know if you can see that. I follow Caleb on Instagram. I think it's close to Amish. And I think he is so cute. Him and his partner are so fun. Um, so yeah, this bag is super well constructed. It's hardy. It's hefty. It has nothing in it and it can stand up. And I really, really enjoy that. Um, if it was a little bit bigger, I'd be really down. I wish I sewed because I would love to make my own project bags because I buy so many freaking project bags. But, oh, I love this bag. And my re most recent purchase of a bag um, I blame the grocery girls. I can blame them for a lot of my purchases because they are enablers. We are all enablers, I feel, in this community. But whatever, I don't care. I love it, though. This is by um, Bags by Awesome Granny. It's a hedgehog with mushrooms and flowers. It's so freaking cute. And then it came with a little notions bag. Ugh. So this is a large. I love large project bags. I Even for, like, a tiny freaking sock, I would put one in here because I just think it's everything. Um, you can see... And then this is the um, the interfacing. I think it's so cute. And this is really well made too. This has the sleeve and two skeins of um, the Timberline. And so, and it still has a bunch of room. I actually had my binder that I keep all of my patterns in in here, which I don't know how the hell it fit, but it did. So I was happy about that. So there's that. And then the Notions bag. I had. To, have I, do I have anything in here? Oh, I have. She. It's really cute. The um, in the bag. Um, or in the package that the, the project bag came in, came with this, which I thought was really cute. Oh. <laughs> I can't tell I'm not a beauty vlogger or anything anymore. Um, but it just says Bags by Awesome Granny. And I think that's so cute, a little progress keeper. It's a little bit heavy, so I kind of worry that it would stretch out the fabric, but I can use it as a zipper pull, and I'm obsessed with it. So, in fact, I'll put it on back now. So, yeah. So there's that. And in terms of yarn, I placed three, was it three orders? Four orders. Okay, so I have four orders coming-ish. One of them, it sucks, I bought two sock blanks, had them sent to the wrong address, had them sent to my old address, and I haven't heard anything about them being, like, uh, sent to the right person. So hopefully, if someone else got them, if the new owner of the house got them, hopefully you love knitting socks, I guess. You're welcome. Happy birthday, Merry Christmas, whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, kind of sucks. They were really cute. They were by Dyed in the House Company, I think. Let me see. Let's go to the handy dandy Etsy because I have it on here. And I didn't like say anything to anyone, like the person who, who dyed them or anything because it was my own fault. I freaking hate Etsy at moments because it kept my, even though I deleted my address twice, it kept it. Whatever. Um, but it was Dyed in the Wool Yarn Co. I had ordered, and I'll show you the receipt. So you can actually see the colors because they're really pretty. Um, ooh, it's reflecting off everything. But it was that one of them had like a little sheen to it and the other one was just like neon. Very pretty. I was very excited about those. Um, and then I ordered this. Actually, let me, before I show the one I actually got in the mail, I ordered um, from Wool and Vine Yarns. Who, Laura, I'm obsessed with you. I watch you on your podcast every week. Um, I ordered a couple of her yarns. Um, they won't ship until she gets back from the from the Cape, so it's fine. I'm not in a rush for them. Here, actually, Ugh. this everyone is not a recent acquisition, but she's my baby. This is Annie. She is a Chihuahua, so she's a Chihuahua Dotson mix. She's my youngest, one of my babies. She's one of the least well behaved because since it monsooned a couple days last week. She has been going to the bathroom inside, even though she has her doggy door. It's awful, but whatever. She's cute, and she knows it, so, yeah. You want to sit on my lap, or you want to get down? Okay, I guess she's going to sit there for now. 
Um, but so I ordered a few from Wool and Vine Yarns, and then I also ordered from Cat's Kettle, Katrina. I watch her too. I think she's so fun. Her hair is everything. That purple, get it, girl. Live your life, get it. Um, I ordered enough for a cardigan, so that'll be the Longfellow cardigan by Brooklyn Tweed. I hope to finish that one after I finish Timberline, even though Lord knows me, I'll probably get started on that one. It's a lot easier. I may finish it sooner, whatever. Um, but this yarn, we, me and Noah, got in the mail. So I got a bag of goodies from Lolo Did It. So I'll start with his yarn. Noah started knitting like a couple weeks ago. He's really good. It's annoying. He was really, really good at spinning. I was eh, at it. He was everything. Um, he didn't want to knit. He didn't want to knit. Didn't want to knit. But I was like, please, because I need someone to knit with me because none of my friends knit. No one I know knits. So I was like imagining like being like Caleb and his boyfriend and watching TV, going to the freaking park, even though it's a million degrees outside and knitting together. Why not? Why can't I do that with you, Noah? So he started knitting. He's really good at it. He enjoys it. He does it by himself now, whatever. Um, so I ordered him this. It is the Lolo Did It Simple DK in Merry Gentleman. So you can see it's really pretty, guys. It is so pretty. Has some speckling in like a dark, like reddish brown color, some black in there. He wants to make a hat with it, I think. Something really simple, which I think is perfect for this yarn because it, it doesn't need a fancy pattern. It just needs itself and to live its life. So, yeah. So that's super exciting. And then I ordered for myself three because... I mean, so we'll start with this one. This is, I don't know, Pretty Young Thing, P-Y-T. I want to love you, Pretty Young Thing. Just kidding. Um, so this is in the Sparkle Sock Face. The sparkle on this is super subtle, but very pretty. It will probably not pick it up because it took me until I got it out of the bag and like examined it to actually see it. But it has like every color. And it's interesting to me because she has another um, colorway pretty little zombies that everyone buys everyone's obsessed with but this were, kind of reminds me of it so I think of like this being like Michael Jackson as a zombie mm, you know because the zombie well maybe it's just me um but yeah I love this yarn I think it's super pretty I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it but I have to get it because reasons then I got this one this one is my favorite of the ones I bought this is another sparkle sock this one you can see the sparkle like nobody's business throughout um this is in fairy pools Oh, look at that. It's subtle, but not. It's very, very pretty. And it has that beautiful Stellina throughout it that just gives it like a really beautiful, like dynamic focus. Oh my God, I wish it would focus. I don't know how to work an iPad camera well at all. There we go. But oh, it is everything. I'm obsessed with this. So yeah, so I have this one. It reminds me kind of of Hedgehog Fibers Pine, but less subtle. I know I just said this was subtle, but in a, like a slightly less subtle version. But yeah, so I got that one. And then the last one that I got is in the Simple DK base, and it is Honey Dukes, which is a new colorway that just came out. <sighs> this is pretty. This is the most rainbowy. No, it's not the most rainbowy. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> I like to pretend things, but it's fine. Uh, this has an interesting amount of rainbow through it um yeah I think this one also could be either like a pair of like fingerless gloves would be pretty or um maybe a hat maybe maybe part of a cowl I'm thinking about making so the cowl that I made for my mom is the broken time cowl by Andrea Mowry um I'll find the link and I'll put it down in the description box hi honey no you're still there um, it's super duper cool and it uses two different colors of, um, DK weight yarn. May use that for it because I think it'd be a good pattern for it. The yarn overs are big enough. See, that sock, the first sock that I showed, or no, the second sock I showed, the one that I have a half object of, I love that yarn. I believe it's, I didn't say this, I don't think, it's Zephyr, um, by Hedgehog Fibers, sorry, in the simple sock, or the skinny singles base, that's what it is. Um, I love it. I love that yarn, but I don't think that that's the right pattern for it because the speckles kind of get lost in the, or the, the lace gets lost in the speckles. So, but the broken time, I think it's because it's a thick 
for yarn, so yarn overs are automatically going to be a little bit bigger. Um, I think that the speckles will show really well. I did one for my mom in, I can't remember what yarn it was. It was by Madeline Tosh Spilled Paint, maybe? Um, I don't think that's a colorway that exists anymore. If it does, eh, prove me wrong, put it in the comments below. Um, but it had speckles and it looked really pretty in it, so I was a fan. I, I thought it was beautiful. So yeah, so those are the yarns that I bought recently. That's the Those are all my acquisitions that I purchased. I Yesterday I purchased a bag from Mrs. Brown's Bags. I jumped on when I saw that her update was live and I got one of the neon ones, which is weird that I didn't get the pretty young thing, but it was too much pink for me, I don't know, whatever. Um, so I got the neon one in garter stitch, gorgeous. I can't wait to get it in the mail. Um, it'll probably be a little while. But I'm going to try my hardest to not buy anything new in the coming weeks because I have two big trips lined up in the next couple of months. So in September, I go to Hawaii for 10 days. I finished my CPC, which is an insurance certification or designation, I should say. Um, I finished that and I'm going in a couple of weeks. Oh my God, my cup has been here this whole time. I am so sorry for that. I'm um, not going to edit it though. Oh, anyway, so I'm going on a free trip to Hawaii for 10 days with my mom. It'll be super fun. I'm so excited. Um, and then in November, I'm fulfilling one of my lifelong dreams and going to Tokyo. I am over the moon about going to Tokyo. I am going to go to either Tokyo Disneyland or sea. We haven't decided yet. Um, we're going on a tour where we're going to go to the Tokyo Tower. Uh, don't we're going just everywhere I'm trying to get tickets to the Studio Ghibli Museum but I put in a request for tickets and they said they were sold out so I was really 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 disappointed about that but I'll try again like a month before through a different website it's kind of interesting because you have to buy your tickets before you go to Japan it's a pain but then to get to Disneyland you have to buy your tickets there at the Disney store in Tokyo so whatever so yeah, so I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and I actually wanted to get this channel started ahead of time because I would love to vlog both of those trips. Um, and so in order to do that, I needed a channel going. And so I've been wanting to do the podcast anyway. So I was like, let me do this. I have a month before I go on my trip, my first trip. So get it started going, take the camera with me. But yeah, so that's what's going on. That's what's new, even though everything's new to you guys with me right now. But let me know what you guys think of the podcast. Let me know any suggestions you guys have. I'm new to this. I'm completely new to this. Um, but I think this will be really fun. I think this is a really cool way to put myself in the community a little bit more. Um, to get to know some of you who I don't know. Obviously, I don't know like anyone in the knitting community I'm horrible about updating my project pages on Ravelry. I don't think, I think like one of the, uh, two of those projects on, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, but I'm, so I'm not that great at it, but I love, I love the podcasting community. I think it is so amazing how supportive and how friendly and how fun it is, how just open everyone is with everything. But yeah. So I'm going to stop here. I'm almost 45 minutes in, which I'm surprised I lasted that long on a podcast. Um, oh, no, I have one more thing to show you guys that I just realized. I just looked over. So when I purchased the stuff from Molly Klein Design, I got these. And there's three of them, but I only have two here. So these are um, stitch markers, or not stitch markers, progress keepers that are Harry Potter themed. So that's a broom. This is a snake, which I'm not the biggest fan of because I'm not Slytherin. I'm all about Ravenclaw. And then on this, I have the other two. Hold on. I shall show you. I was so excited. I've never owned project bags or progress keepers or anything until now. And so I was like, oh my God, yes. Oh, I should show this too, actually. So let me finish with these. So this one is my favorite. It's a little phoenix. So pretty. And then there's this one, and they were so affordable, you guys. So affordable. Molly Klein Design, I think, is my favorite shop because of how affordable she is and great quality with everything and such unique stuff. And when I purchased my order for Spin Cycle, they gave me a little 
stitch marker. Isn't that cute? And it's a happy testing. I thought that was so sweet. So yeah, so I wanted to show those because I brought them over here, so why wouldn't I show them? Anyway, so yeah, I think with that, I will let you all go. I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. Please subscribe if you liked the video. I sound like every other freaking YouTuber out there now. Um, but go ahead and, and hit that thumbs up if you don't mind. Do that. So yeah, um, with that, I will say au revoir. And until hopefully next week, that's my plan is to try to do one a week. So yeah, have a good one, guys. Bye.